Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to make a modern day photo look like a 19th century daguerreotype. This image was transformed from this by simply applying a few filters and adding an old daguerreotype texture to it. The size of this document is 1400 by 2100 pixels with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. It's always a good idea to make a copy of your original document, so press Ctrl or Command J. Let's zoom into the image, so choose your magnifying tool, and then click and drag from one corner to the opposite corner of the area. Because people had to sit or stand motionless for many minutes in front of the daguerreotype camera, there were oftentimes blurs in areas where people moved. So we're going to create some realism by adding a motion blur to her hand and forearm. Click on the lasso tool and draw a selection around them. Then click select and refine edge. The refine edge window will open and I'm going to feather it out quite a lot to about 52 pixels. Then go to filter, blur, and motion blur. I'm choosing an angle of the blur that's similar to the angle she'd be moving her arm. And then increase the distance to an amount that looks good. Let's give this image some texture. Go to Filter, Texture, and Grain. The Grain Filter dialog box will open. Keep in mind, each photo is different based on its size, resolution, and individual characteristics, so you may find different numbers work better for your image. I'm using an intensity of 64, a contrast of 45, and the grain type is clumped. Let's make the color look more like a daguerreotype. Press Ctrl or Command U to call up the hue saturation window. Check the colorize box. I'm going to type in 9 for the hue, 9 for saturation, and the lightness to 13. Click on the new layer icon, and making sure you have black as your foreground color, press Alt or Option Delete to fill the layer with black. This layer will be used to create scratches in our photo. Go to Filter, Texture, and Grain. The Grain Filter window will open again, for this photo, I'm choosing an intensity of 70, a contrast of 75, and the grain type is vertical. Let's rename this layer Scratches. We're ready to add our daguerreotype paper texture. There's a great website called lostandtaken.com set up by Caleb Kimbrough. In it, he includes a zip file you can download for free that contains almost a dozen samples. You can open the zip file with any number of extracting tools like WinZip or 7-Zip. Once you store and locate them in your computer, just right-click on one of them and choose Open With and click Adobe Photoshop. When the file opens, click anywhere in the image and hold down as you drag it up into the tab where your working Photoshop file is. Then when your Photoshop file opens, drag your mouse anywhere within your file and release. Because these paper textures are rather large, you may have to reduce their sizes to fit your photo. To do this, press Ctrl or Command T to call up the transform. Press Ctrl or Command Zero to see the entire size of the paper texture. Then press Shift as you click and drag in on a corner to reduce its size and use your move tool or press the letter V to move the transform into position. To move any side in, just click on the point in the middle of the side you want to move and drag it in. To accept the transform, just press enter or return. To save time, I added a few of these paper textures to our Photoshop file so we can compare a few of them. Let's see what the top texture looks like. Each paper texture has its own unique characteristics, so try different blending modes to see how each one affects your photo. I found soft light really works well. Let's hide that texture and make another texture visible. I like this texture a lot for this image. I'll click on the layer to make it active and call up the magnifying tool to enlarge it up. Press the new layer icon to make a new layer. 
We're going to place into this layer a composite snapshot of our image. To do this, press Control Shift Alt E or Command Shift Option E on a Mac. Let's drag the layer to the top. The image could use a bit more contrast, so press Control or Command L to call up the Levels window. Her face could be brighter, so I'll slide the highlights arrow to the left. So here is our final daguerreotype image we created from a regular color photo. Have fun making your own. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.